Sound? Alright, perfect. I'll yep. just do the uh, intro again then. So, uh, yeah, welcome yeah. to Resident Evil 2 Remaster. Um, for the, before this run starts, we have a donation incentive where we will be choosing which costume to use, and I was just informed that Arclay Sheriff won, so that is the costume that we're going to be using. But yeah, apart from that, I'm pretty much ready. Yep, whenever you're ready, man. Alright, in three, two, one... Go! go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Load screen always takes a while. So yeah, this is the uh, the Leon A standard route, um, which follows the uh, pretty much the default scenario that you start with when you play the game for the first time. It's slightly different from the B scenario, both in the fact that uh, the, uh, the the placement for a lot of items and key items and sort of events that happen throughout the game are different from version to version. But yeah, this is the, pretty much the, the standard one. For the majority of this run, you're pretty much going to be seeing me sort of just casually playing the game, but just in an optimized way, only getting the necessary items and taking the most optimal route. Here in the beginning, there isn't really much to say. We're going to be doing some kind of precise movement. You can sort of see it every time I run around a 90 degree corner, where he sort of just walks forward and then immediately just walks like 90 degrees to the left or the right. It's not super hard to do, it's just a trick where you um, sort of let go of W or whatever direction you're uh, pressing and then you press A and D to like just do a pretty quick turn. It's not super important, but it's it's pretty much the main speed trick. Oh yeah, also another speed trick that you can use is whenever you go down stairs in this game, if you aim down sights and then quickly like stop aiming down sights again, you actually go faster up and down staircases. So pretty much whenever I see a staircase, I'm going to be aiming down sights just to get a little bit of a speed boost. It's not much, but it's a little bit. But right, here we are. We're just arriving at the police station now. This is where the, the main part of the game begins. The, um, the gas station and this part where you're running sort of functions as a tutorial, I guess. But this is where the actual main puzzle bits of the games begin. Not that it makes much of a difference. <laughs> more running. Yeah, it's, it's just more running. The first bit of the game is pretty calm, I'd say, in terms of what actually goes on, while the later game has like pretty much ev enemies around every single corner and a whole bunch of things happening. The one thing I do know is that it's like random if you kill a zombie on a headshot, right? Yes, the um, well, it's it's sort of random at the same time not, because every single zombie has an a health um, value given to them, but the amount of health that they're given depends on your challenge level. Now the game has a sort of dynamic difficulty system where if you're doing very, very well, then zombies will actually have more health and will just be more aggressive. While if you're doing super shitty, if you're low on health, you're low on ammo, and you're getting caught a whole bunch, then you, um... Yeah, the zombies will just have less health and will be way less aggressive. So that actually means whenever we do get into a fight with a zombie, it's actually super hard to tell... Oh shit, I didn't get the knife. It's actually super hard to tell, uh whether this zombie is going to die in one hit or in 20 hits. All right, so this one knife that we actually got here is normally casually just used as an item to defend yourself against the zombies, but in the speed run, it's actually incredibly important because the damage that you do with the knife in this game is actually based around your FPS, which means if I have a very, very high FPS whenever I use my knife, I can actually do way more damage than I would ever be able to do with either a shotgun or a pistol or anything else like that. So for Which that is, reason, normally yeah. in the um, on the speedrun leaderboards, you would be using a capped FPS of either 60 or 120, but I don't really feel like using a capped FPS, so I'm just rocking like 150 right now. Sometimes more, depending on <laughs> what the ha what's happening in the wow. game. Literally hacking. Speaking of, why are we playing on standard difficulty? The Resident Evil community is incredibly strange. 
The there are three it different. Should be like that, right? Yeah, pretty much, because the Resident Evil community have this. They have this weird idea of sort of the purity of the game and like on the premise of the game because there are three difficulty modes. There's assisted, standard, and hardcore. And it's, yeah, you'd probably expect what they do. You know, enemies have more health on hardcore and standard than they do on assisted. And you also just take more damage. Also on hardcore, one thing that's important to note is whenever you um, shoot an enemy in the head, they're not guaranteed to stagger. While on assisted and standard, they every single time you shoot them in the head, they will always stagger just a little bit. But it's just enough to let you uh, pass through them without any kind of issues like that. But yeah, for some reason, the Resident Evil community just uh, all agreed that assisted is apparently a miscellaneous category and not just the standard category, despite it being objectively faster. Again, why? I don't know. It's the same reason why actual any percent for this game, so assisted difficulty and allowing glitches is also a miscellaneous category. And that was just not even up for debate. That was just like day one, like, yeah, game is out. Glitches are banned. Easiest difficulty is uh, miscellaneous. Yeah. It just be like that. Alright, so this is the uh, the cutscene where we actually meet Claire for the second time. We saw her at the very beginning of the game, and this is where you uh, reunite with her for a brief moment. But uh, we're not really going to be seeing her again throughout the rest of the game. The story of this game is kind of weird, I'd say. Well, the, the game in itself is just weird overall. The main reason why there are all these weird puzzle elements in the police station, I think from a story perspective, it's because this police station used to be some kind of museum, which is why you see all these weird statues and things all over the place. But it, to me, still doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Yeah, and if you have never played a Resident Evil game or never seen one, it's basically just go get the item or the key that you need to progress and then mm. like solve this puzzle and then go to the next area and then get this item you need and then progress to the next area. Yeah. So you'll be seeing me running through pretty much the same area a whole bunch, especially this main hall. But it's because um, we often need to go to different areas of the uh, police station to get a specific item run all the way back and get something else. Go in. Somewhere, run all the way back, etc. So right there at the beginning, when we ran over here, we needed the blue key to open up the, uh, the corridor or when the east wing of the mansion. Then we went over to the, or sorry, not mansion, east wing of the police station. We go there, we collect the bolt cutters, we come back so we can open up this chain. So we can go in here and then get the detonator. The detonator we're going to be using a little bit later. Oh no. Oh wait, okay. We got what? <laughs> what, you alright? Yeah, no. Stream dead. It's okay. Stream is dead? <laughs> no, we're back. Alright, perfect. <laughs> Can't spook me like that. But yeah, pretty much every single zombie spawn is already predetermined, so... Not all- actually, that's a lie. Not all of them are predetermined. There are a couple that are in slightly different positions every time, but they're usually always within the same area. So when you walk into, like, a corridor, you always know in this corridor there's gonna be three zombies. Their exact position might be a little bit different every time, but... It's usually, you know, close enough that you can still work with it every time. Alright, this is a liquor in this hallway. Now, normally, casually, you either need to shoot them by, yeah, you know, killing them in the brain, or you can walk past them. But here, I'm just gonna YOLO, run past them, and pray doesn't get me! Oh, okay, good. Perfect. Alright, here's another puzzle. Uh, this is where we get a gold coin from the statue, and we need three of these to progress to the, um, to the secret passage where the first boss is. But just before we go there, I'm just gonna set up this puzzle a little bit more. This will help us a little bit later. Because again, we're gonna be coming back to this area when we have what we need to open up this bookcase. But for now, we're just gonna go upstairs, go in here, 
get this backpack upgrade. And this is where we use the detonator. So we blow up this little hole in the wall because on the other side there's where you get one of the medallions that we need. Also, neat little trick that you can do here. Normally this explosion will make that door that I just ran through get blocked off. But if you just open it from the other side just so the explosion goes off, the door will not get blocked. Alright, what's this? Grobo snake. Oh yeah, do you need me to look up any of the puzzles? No. <laughs> I have them in my notes. Oh, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, in my, in my splits I've been noted down them. Ah, oh, fuck. I have it noted down, like, what split's coming up and what I need to do for each individual one. Which is argu arguably probably the hardest part of this game. The puzzles? And not for the puzzles are not forgetting to pick up any items, right? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, there are also some scenarios where you want to be using your resources. So, for example, um... Hold on, I need to do this puzzle. One sec. Uh, I need to branch and then bird. There. Fishbowl snake. But yeah, when you get grabbed by zombies, there's a mechanic in this game where you can use your um. No, don't examine it. Discard it. Where you can use either your knife, a grenade, or a flashbang to sort of defend yourself from taking any damage. Now, most of the grenades, flashbangs, and uh, knives that we get in the run, we actually need to use especially knives because like I said earlier knife damage is tied to FPS so because we're playing on PC we can do a whole crap load of damage with it so a big thing that can sort of kill a run or at least lose you a lot of time is if you accidentally use one too many of your grenades or flashbangs in an area where you shouldn't Alright, so coming up here in a second is actually going to be the first boss, which is called Birkin. We're going to be meeting him a couple times throughout the game. He has the majority of the boss fights, where I believe on Claire, you meet him four times total, but on... Well, sorry, in Claire A snare, you meet him twice. Wait, or is it... No, three times. And on the B snare, it's four times for Claire. But we're only going to be seeing him twice here. So I'm going to shoot him once in the head, and then I'm going to knife him with my 100 FPS, because my FPS is dropping right now. Should die here? Oh, no! Oh, this could be bad. Alright, okay, we're good. Whew. Give me my knife back, thank you very much. Yeah, that fight was, uh, eh, not the best. Normally, when he grabs me there where I stab him with a knife, he normally is dead by there, but I think I dropped a little bit of FPS, which actually reduces my damage. So a little bit unlucky, but hey, we made it work. The most important part is that the knife doesn't break, because you might have seen when I hovered over my knife, every knife that you get has durability, so the more you stab people with it, the durability on the knife goes down, and when the durability runs out, then the knife just breaks. So every time you shank something, it um, goes down a little bit. Another important thing about the knife is, the knife will, during one swing, scan for several hits. Which means, if you have three zombies in front of you, right, you'll do like a swiping motion hitting all three zombies. But that works for bosses as well. So for example, Birkin there, his hitbox is super wide, which means when you do a knife swing, you actually hit him several times with the knife. Which allows you to just burn him down super quickly because, well, first off, you're doing a lot of damage with the knife because of your FPS, and second of all, you're just hitting him several times on every individual hit for, you know, pretty much like triple or quadruple damage. So here we are in the basement. The main goal of the game is to, uh, oops, get the handle. Is to escape from the police station. Now, right now we're in the parking garage, right next to the exit, but it's been closed off. So we need to go get some different electronic parts to uh, open up the last door. So for that, the first electronic part is in this other end of the parking garage down here, 
whilst the other one is all the way up in the clock tower at the top floor. So, as I mentioned earlier, there's a whole bunch of running back and forth and collecting specific items and then running back and then getting another item, running back, and so on. No, I'm not capped on FPS right now. I'm playing on uncapped, although regularly you'll be playing at like a capped 120. I just don't want to. Like for example, my FPS is like 218 right now. I just think something happened in that boss fight, so it just dipped down to like 100. Which is unlucky, but you know. So there's no real benefit of using 60 FPS over 120. No, no, no. no. It's... There is... Yeah, just two categories. Not two categories, but two labels basically. Yeah, yeah. So you either cap it to 120 or to 60. All right, I remember that puzzle. Good. Nice. Got there. All right, say hello to the doggies. I'm gonna see if I can dodge this one. Ah, oh, sad. Yeah, because when you turn the power on, obviously all the cage is just open. Yeah, that's how kennels work. Every time when they have the dogs in there, they need to shut off the power. And if someone shuts it back on, they're all free. They're just <laughs> out of there. Alright, do another doggy dodge. Ooh, there you go. Oh no, his friend got me. A lot of the dogs, they can sort of be predictable and at the same time they can't. So this dog, sometimes he'll just swipe at me three times in this corridor, or sometimes he's gonna be nice and just not follow me at all? Okay, that's cool. I'm done with that. Certain enemies can only follow you into certain areas. So for example, the dogs will always be down in the parking garage. They can't really be anywhere else in the game, so you can never walk down a hallway and expect a dog. Although the zombies can follow you through doors. They're just so slow that it never really becomes relevant. Alright, so for this next part... We're getting the fuse box to open this door, and then I'm going to be using. Oh, oops. I'm going to be using a flashbang here to stun these boys. Put the fuse in, open the door, and get this fresh knife off the wall. I'm going to equip this knife as sort of a backup. So, in the scenario that I do get grabbed, it's the shitty knife that I use rather than my good knife. How many bolts do I have? Seven. Oof. Eh, maybe I should have gotten that spare ammo. Eh, it's probably fine. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> I mean, bullets are never really used for fighting actual enemies. You just use them to to pop an enemy in the head once to stagger him and then just run past them. So most of the time, it's not really that important to have a lot of ammo. It's only really the shotgun in the late game, because we're going to be using a shotgun that we get later in the game. Uh, to kill the final boss. Well, not the final boss, the second to last boss. I'll talk about the final boss when we get to him, because he works a little bit differently from other bosses. Oh, that's bad, actually. Alright. Uh, combine with that. Discard this. Yes, good. But yeah, I got some spare ammo, just in case. I feel like I can afford being a little safe here. So currently our main goal is to go outside and then put out this fire that's down here. Because this fire, that's from the helicopter crash that we saw earlier, which is on the other side where Claire is. And to do that, we need to collect the green key down here, which I believe is the spade key? Or maybe it's the clubs. I don't know. All the keys are marked after the, uh, the symbols from card games. I think the spade is blue, but... I, then again, I also don't run this game, so... Fair. So as you can see here, I'm just sort of aiming for their heads to just... Pop once, yes. twice, and then That's dip close. right past them. For those that are wondering, there is an any percent category for this game, and it's, uh... It's very glitchy in that you can use zombies to make them grab you in a specific way, which makes them put you out of bounds. So you can skip pretty much the first half hour of this run in the any percent run by just doing it out of bounds with one of the zombies. A lot of people dislike doing it though because it's just very dull. It's doing one clip in the first two minutes, 
and then just walking in the infinite nothingness for like half an hour. Oh, yeah, this is Mr. X. Whew. This is the man that apparently everybody's scared by. Mr. X is actually kind of easy to deal with once you sort of understand how he works. Mr. X will always um, uh, try to do a punch towards you, but if you just sort of sidestep it by walking like an inch forward to uh, to bait out the attack and then just take just one step backwards, then he'll immediately just retreat and you're you're good to go. Yeah, I don't know why people are scared of him. He seems like a super nice guy. He's always there to watch your back. Alright, here's he a He also looks a little bit like Thomas. Like who? Like the, the guy from the movie that people talk about. Oh, Purple Thanos. <laughs> that guy, yes. Mr. Purpleman. The snappy finger guy. Alright, here I'm gonna touch this door for a second to actually make Mr. X spawn. Now, the reason why I want Mr. X to spawn is because... In this upcoming bit, there's a liquor. Well, is he gonna spawn? I hear him. Whew, got him. Because if he um, if he follows me here, it can be a little bit problematic. But I think this works fine with him being right there. Although I'm not entirely sure. Because for this next library, we're going to be using the lever that we just picked up to uh, move the bookcases around. Although, I'm not entirely sure if this is going to work or not. Alright, no need to flashbang. Normally you throw a flashbang there to flash Mr. X because he's gonna be fucking you up while you um, move these bookcases, but we managed to uh, not have to waste a flashbang. Flashbangs are pretty valuable compared to normal grenades because normal grenades will explode in like about a three meter radius and then it will pretty much instant kill any zombie that it comes into contact with. But flashbangs, they don't do any damage, but the radius is much, much bigger. It's like up to 10 meters, it goes through walls, and it stuns every enemy, like Mr. X, Lickers, normal zombies, anything for like up to 10 seconds. So you can just throw a flashbang in a corner, and then you can just do whatever. You have plenty of time. Uh, oops. Oh, I didn't get the wheel. Oops. <laughs> no, 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 this is a small mistake. The wheel is just down here. You need to like yeah, put this wheel in and then take it back immediately. And I forgot to take it. Big yikes. Could maybe talk about the health while you do that. Oh yeah, then, health I mean, is uh, works in a kind of interesting way where um, you have four stages. There is critical or danger, which is the red health. There is yellow which is um, caution, then there is light green, which is fine, and then there is bright green, which is also fine. Uh, bright green just means uh, you're at full HP, light green, you've taken a little bit of damage, yellow, you've taken a little bit of damage, and then red is pretty much one hit and you're dead. Now, healing items will always heal you back up to full HP every single time you use one, so... Um, Pretty much whenever I get to yellow HP like I am right now, I'm not really scared because most enemies on standard will still only do one amount of health to like put me down to red if they get me. So I'm not really scared to use my healing just yet, but if I do make it into the red, that's when I'm going to be using it. Oh hi. Yeah. And despite those categories, there's still a numeric hidden value to your health, so you don't have like four health and health. And like exactly. I believe it comes like a percentage, right? Yeah, I believe you actually your health value is actually around 2400, but the amount of health that you actually have changes because again, the amount of damage that zombies do and the amount of health they have changes depending on how well you're doing in the game. So right now I think I'm doing pretty well, so zombies will actually do a little bit more damage than usual. So there are times where zombies will take you from green into yellow rather than green into light green fine 
So yeah, it's not super often that it's relevant, but it happens sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's also poison, but I think it's more relevant in the first RE game. Oh, yeah, okay. poison is not relevant at all, really, in this run. Well, even in the casual playthrough, I didn't ever really feel like it was needed. Does health affect speed? That's actually an interesting question. On Leon, it does not, because you can see his animation for running changes depending on how much health he has, but for Leon, it doesn't make any difference. You can be full health, low health, medium health, doesn't make any difference. But for Claire, for some reason, having yellow HP, so being at caution, I believe it's called? Ah, oh, shit. All right, now I'm gonna use a health item. Actually, maybe I didn't need to, whatever. But running at yellow HP as Claire will actually make her run ever so slightly faster, which is also the, one of the main reasons why the actual fastest any percent category is on assisted difficulty with glitches with Claire, because you get an, uh, into an out of bounds by taking a little bit of damage as Claire, which makes her run faster and get into the out of bounds. Again, why Claire is faster? I have no clue. She just is. Yeah, it's just ever so slightly, so it's, it's not, like it's not much, so it's not like whoa, world record pace or anything like that. Is this not hardcore difficulty? No, this is standard difficulty. The main reason why I don't really enjoy running hardcore difficulty is because on hardcore difficulty, if I were to die, I'd need to make manual saves throughout the run. And there is obviously a chance that I might fail, and it's just not really fun to have the entire run just sort of crash, just because I got slightly unlucky somewhere. Oh yeah, by the way, that trick that I just did was actually super nice. In that hallway, like, 10 zombies spawn, plus Mr. X. But if you just run far enough into the hallway to make Mr. X spawn, throw the flashbang, then the flashbang will flash every zombie in the hallway and Mr. X like a quarter of a second after he spawns, giving you, you know, plenty of time to run through. Because as I mentioned earlier, flashbangs just give you plenty of room to work with, which is why it makes them so good. But this is Ada. We met her in an earlier cutscene, but I skipped it, so we never really saw her until now. Oh yeah, Claire is faster in the any person round. So if you play as Claire, you do like different paths to your end. So playing Claire and Leon is actually... Yeah. Both within the police station, you take a slightly different route, because when you make it to the parking garage, you take a different route back up into the police station. And when you get outside again, Claire normally makes it down this pathway here and gets chased by Mr. X and a couple dogs. But on Leon, you go into the gun shop here and you're escorted by Ada. Also, to the question that asked why I'm playing as Leon if Claire is faster, Claire is faster time-wise, yes, but the route is actually different. Because like I said, you start in a different spot, the items are different for Claire, the route is different, and yeah. it's You're straight up learning a different route if you play as Claire. It's not as as if the game is the exact same, just slightly faster. It's just straight up a different route. Also, I just prefer the Leon route because it's the one I've played the most. Do people run Claire or Leon more? Um, I'm not sure anymore, but back when the game originally came out, most people were playing Leon just because that's what the majority of players just has at their first playthrough, so I think they just wanted to like continue doing that for runs. But yeah, it, it's it's Claire B scenario that's overall the fastest as far as I'm aware. And it comes down to personal preference in the end. Yeah. If you like playing as Leon like me, play as Leon. Some people just like playing as Claire, and that's fine too. Gee, thanks. Can't imagine a real scientist being down here. So yeah, we finally escaped from the police station and we're escorting Ada out of here because she promised to help us to learn about why everybody's turning into zombies. And apparently that's going to lead us down into the sewers where apparently there's going to be a secret science facility where a whole bunch of science stuff is happening. Sherry section kind of bores you. Yeah, that's actually also 
a noteworthy thing, I guess. Um, when you play as Leon and as Claire, there is a scenario about halfway through the game where as Claire, you play as a little girl called Sherry who's trapped in an orphanage, while as Leon, which you're actually going to see in about five minutes, we were going to play as a woman called Ada, the one that we were just escorting like a couple minutes ago. Alright, this is a big crocodile. Native to the North American sewers in its natural size. Yeah, but this is this section is sort of just the Crash Bandicoot runaway section. You don't need to hold any buttons for that, it will just run automatically. And it also always doing the same pattern. So. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it's always going to attack to the right once, attack to the left twice, and then one more time to the right. So you can always just align yourself up perfectly. It's Killer Croc. Yeah, dude, we're actually playing Batman. We're playing as uh, Bruce Wayne right now. We, Batman sadly had to kill Killer Croc, even though that's against Batman's code. Just get up here. Can't say I didn't warn you. You said the virus turned people into monsters, not reptiles. Fair point. I'm just yeah, also due to the limitations of the categories, more or less limitations. Um, the times really don't change that much, like, there's not much to be found in terms of optimization at this point, I think. It's mostly no. just better execution and yeah, it's less like, mistakes. It's like I said at the very beginning of the run, most of the time saves that you do have in this run is just from your movement and how well you uh, manage your resources. So for example, I'm not the fastest, I admit that. My menuing is not the best in the world, and I don't do like pixel perfect left and right turns. But uh, you know, that's where most of the time saves come from. And that is far more dangerous. Or in your term, it's you, you save more time by messing up less. Yeah. Getting hit less, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Alright, so this is where we play as Ada. Now, something happened in that cutscene where um, where Leon gets shot by um, a woman named, named Annette Birkin, who was one of the people that invented the virus that made everybody into zombies. So right now we're going to go hunt her down as Ada, while Leon is just sort of chilling down there, hanging out. Yeah, and for some reason she had to change clothing as well. No, 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 she was wearing a jacket. This is just what she had underneath the jacket. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, Momo, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't you wear a nice fancy dress when there's a zombie apocalypse? Every time. Love my fancy red dress. But yeah, the Ada section is not really that long. It um, It's just the section where you get this extra little science gun, like the hacker gun or something like that, which allows you to uh, hack generators through walls. It's kind of a weird, interesting mechanic because it wasn't in the original Resident Evil 2. The same with the, ser with the Sherry scenario that you get as the uh, in the Claire scenario, but it's just I don't know. It's nice and it's weird and it's different. Oh no! You got me. Tragic. That's a 50 DKP minus right there. Push it. Alright, there's a net. Who apparently just disappears into a wall. Always been good at running, Matt. See, that's a wall. Oh yeah, and Mr. X is here again. Mr. X pretty much just follows you throughout the entire game. Also, oops, I hit that lever too early. You hack that door, and you hack this. And then, after we've hacked this little vent here, we've escaped. So if you're fast during that little section there, then Mr. X doesn't even get close to you at all. You can make it past him, easy peasy. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, I never really looked much into learning the Claire route, but I believe the, uh, the whole mechanic of aiming down sights while going up and down stairs 
isn't actually as fast on Claire as it is for Leon. Again, because their animations are slightly different. Not really sure what it is for Ada, but I believe people do it anyways. But then again, we're talking about a couple of frames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not much. <laughs> yeah. Bravo. Who is Mr. X? Uh, he, he's a nice man. He's just there to help and we're just rejecting him. He's the real homie. Yeah, shooting this class is absolutely necessary. I've seen every single RE runner do it, so... Yeah, saves like five hours of the game. I'm seeding the RNG. Totally. This is a very intense puzzle. You have like a minute to get out of this furnace, but we still have plenty of time left when we're done by it. You just pretty much need to hack every single object in the room. Sort of in a specific order, but it's, yeah. It's not hard at all. So thank God for heat resistant shoes. They might, they might not look like it, but they are totally heat resistant, right? Yeah, these aren't just your normal regular heels. These are like titanium steel. They can take the heat. All right, so this marks the end of the uh, of the Ada section, and now we're back to uh, to Leon again. So this is the sewer section part of the game, which is probably my least favorite part of the game. Not because anything that happens here sucks, just the whole aesthetic of the level design is just not really as cool. It just looks, you know, you're just walking through a gross ass fucking sewer. It's not nice. You guys got a moment for a donation? Yeah, go ahead. Alright. We've got $20 from Edward Malice, who says, I'm enjoying this Leon run. I don't know what Super Hattie 64 is, but I'm in for more fun runs. <laughs> I wanted to say something, now I've forgotten. Fuck. Spring. That's wait, 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 go, that wait to go, Spring. I mean, it wasn't important anyways, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I mean, we were talking about the sewer aesthetics, but... Yeah, it was something relating to that, I think. Fuck, what was it? <laughs> I've forgotten. I've completely forgotten what I wanted to say. Eh, yeah, whatever. Oh yeah, up here in a second we're actually gonna meet our... our next new enemy, which... I believed are called... Adult... Zombies? Or Adult Gs? Which are these blob monsters here. Now, they always sit and they lurk under the water, and then when you get close to them, they're gonna pop out and then just eat you. But if you just shoot them once, then they jump out of the water, and then they just sort of, you know, take around three to four seconds where they jump out of the water, but you can just run past them during that time. Because they're just sort of stuck in that animation. I actually prefer the term blob monsters. Yeah, I mean. Or blobbies. Blobby boys. Alright, so here we are, down in the sewer. Uh, we just saw Ada getting thrown into a, um, like a trash pit on the other side of this wall. And to get her out of there, obviously, we need chess pieces. <laughs> because that's how fucking sewer electricity systems work. There's like a giant titanium sealed steel door <laughs> where you need plugs that are shaped as chess pieces. One is the king piece, there's a queen piece, there's a rook, a bishop, and a, a tower, and I don't know. Yeah, it's, and the it's very Resident Evil. Yeah, yeah, just chess pieces or puzzle pieces that just don't really make any sense whatsoever. Yeah, especially the earlier Resident Evil games from the original series on. Uh, just liked to put in like philosophical-ish stuff, like you always had like yin yang, dragon, uh, tigers and stuff. So, oh, I didn't hit the lever. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> don't eat me! Don't eat me! Jump down. Hello, sir. Open gate, please. Open, 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 open. Whew. You good? Alright, here's another big boy. He's gonna run past them. 
I didn't want to have to use our last bullet for that guy. That would have been... That would have been very close. Because I think I only have one bullet left in my pistol. Although I'm going to be picking up some extra bullets just up these stairs. And also these shotgun bullets. Actually, wait, is that a good idea? Uh... Actually, no. Oops. <laughs> I don't have inventory space. Ah, fuck. Actually, never mind. You get the satchel upgrade. I remember how to play this game. So here we're back to the place where we were earlier, where we're gonna get the uh, the rook piece back that we found. Now you can't take the rook piece with you when you're here originally because the um, the bridge is lowered, and if you remove the piece, then the bridge goes back up again, which means you can't go back. All right, please despawn. We have more donations. Hello? 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 Hello, Spring? No oh, sorry, I was organizing something. No, there's no more. Oh, okay. I was excited. People should donate more. Yeah. Give us your money. Oh, oh, this, no. this is a pretty difficult section of the game right here. The uh, the next little corridor that you need to go through through the sewers has a whole bunch of these G adults, and they're in a pretty tight space, so you need to dodge them in a quite specific manner, especially because you also need to shoot one of them in a specific spot, which makes him despawn. But if I miss it, then he's going to stay there, and it's going to be bad news. How much health do I have? I'm fine. This is fine. This is getting worse. No. Oh, wrong item. Oh, rip my flashbang. I thought I had the. What? He still hit me. Put the knife on. All right, hit the shot. I didn't hit the shot. Okay, it didn't matter. In this little section, that's where you get the king chest piece, which um, is kind of weird because there's like a mini sort of puzzle-esque section as well here, but it's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's strange the way it works. You yeah, whoever like, designed this. Yeah, the electrician that put this place together really needs to get fired. Like, I don't know what he's doing. Oh, go up the stairs. Also, by the way, in that little room over there, there's a flamethrower, which is just an extra weapon that you can get in this run. Except you just don't need it at all in the speedrun. It's just not necessary. Do I not have a health <clears throat> potion? Pretty much the only weapon you would need is the rocket launcher, right? Pretty much. For NG+. Because the rocket launcher is just straight up the best weapon in the game. It'll one-shot every single enemy, even the last boss, on hardcore difficulty. It pretty much makes the entire game a joke if you play. Oh, oops. If you play with the rocket launcher. Which is, I guess, also one of the main reasons why people prefer using uh, or playing new game, because it's just. It's just a little bit more interesting to actually have to manage items and care about ammo and care about your health items, because, yeah. With the rocket launcher, it has infinite ammo. It has a blast radius. It can shoot a missile like every two seconds or something like that. Oops. I need this guy to despawn. Also talking about item management, sadly when you discard something, you don't just drop it, you get rid of it forever, right? Yeah. So you can't just drop something, then use the item you're gonna get rid of and then pick it back up. Yeah, so if I pick up one too many items, it could actually be kind of bad news. Alright, I'm gonna get grabbed by this guy and then have him eat my shitty knife. Alright, this guy needs to also not grab me. Alright, good. Oh, 
All right, so here there's a little sneaky boy that's gonna drop out of the water. There he is. He's gonna crawl towards me. There he is. And we're just gonna run by him. I love the little animation he has where he just sort of like lurks through the water like, hee hee, I'm gonna get ya. Hee hee. Oh, speaking about unlocks in chat, isn't there like different challenges? There, There's like different challenges, right? Yes. Like beating the game under four hours or something? Yeah, you know? the, um, the difficulty that you get in this game, or not the difficulty, the, um, the rank that you get, you know, if you can get like A rank, C rank, B rank, S rank and S plus rank. The uh, the best rank that you can get is called S plus. And to get S rank, you need to beat the game in less than two hours, I believe. And to get S plus, you need to beat the game in less than two hours on hardcore difficulty, and use only up to three saves, which is kind of uh, can be kind of difficult. Yeah. So at that point, you're basically just speed running. There's no more casual. Yeah. Also, I don't remember this puzzle. I think it's like this. Very good. Uh... Easy. 500 IQ brain. Okay, almost there. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting. There's a boss fight coming up here in a second with uh, the Birkin guy that we saw earlier. This boss fight is a little interesting, is in that it is based around two phases. First off, you need to run away from him in this little room that's coming up here, and then you need to fight him on a platform on a crane. Now, normally you need to hit him twice with the crane before he um, the, before he dies, but... Um, shit. How's it again? Oh, there we go. Yeah, if you do a lot damage to him before he gets hit by the first crane, you can essentially one cycle the boss. So if you don't do enough damage, you always need to do it twice. Here I'm gonna throw a grenade to hopefully bait the boss down. Yep, because normally he would be sticking his arm through the ceiling here and try to grab you. But if you throw that little grenade, that actually baits him out early. Alright, here I'm gonna get my flashbang ready. Because this is where you run away. And this is the container that you need to hit him with. So we're going to push the container. This is where things can either go very well or very wrong. You should leave it louder. Yep. Throw the nade. Oops. Get the knife out. Hit him with your 140 FPS. Oh, you hit me. Get the new knife out because the old one's about to break. Come over here, asshole. Did that work? One cycle? Oh, no, no, one cycle. Sad. Hello, sir. Do not hit me. Oh. Come here, come here. I'm dead. Okay, I'm not dead, but neither is he. Alright, this is going to shit. <laughs> Do I have any healing items? Uh, okay, we have one. Whew. One thing that's important to note is if he grabs me while the container is punching him, then he's going to take me with him into the death, so I have to do this section over again. S 
stop. All right, that's him. He's dead. Whew, thank God. All right, that was a super messy boss fight, but <laughs> I'm just happy I didn't die at least. Thank God. That could have been done way better. Let's hope that's the last of them. Because yeah, if I died, I'd have to do the section all over again. Uh, goodbye, spring. Whew. Now there are two more boss fights throughout the rest of the game. The second to last one isn't as difficult as this one, but it might just be slow because I ended up using quite a many resources on this guy. Because like I said, normally you need just a flashbang and two knives on that guy, but I beefed it a little bit, so things did go slightly wrong. Alright, here I'm just storing some items that we don't need anymore. So the, uh, the green key and then also the handle. How many knives do I have? I have three, jeez. I'm gonna equip this one. This is my safety knife. And that's the last of him. We're never gonna see him again, right? Oh. Alright, so here in the story, we're gonna take this little cable car that's under the city and take it down to a facility called Nest, which is the place where the, uh, the zombie virus was being developed by the, uh, the lady that we met earlier. And at Birkin. Oh, so you might have realized that I have the uh, the shotgun upgrade in my bag, even though we don't have the shotgun. Normally, you get the shotgun towards the very beginning of the game, but if you don't pick up the shotgun in the beginning of the game, there's actually going to be a shotgun in this room over here. I'm not going to get it just yet. I'm going to be taking a slight detour first. But one thing that I've actually found out is, on the Claire playthrough, normally you get a, a, a grenade launcher instead of the shotgun, but you for some reason don't get a grenade launcher in this room if you don't pick it up earlier as Claire, but as Leon you do get the shotgun if you forget it or skip it. Which is, I don't know, I don't know, just weird. Alright, here I'm going to be picking up some extra stuff, get an extra nade from this guy. Shoot this guy, take his ammunition, run past this lady, having a nice little afternoon snack. So here, on the other side of this wall, there's going to be a police officer. Now this guy is wearing body armor, which means you can only stagger him by shooting him in the head. So you need to go for those six CSGO headshots. This guy's the most annoying, especially on hardcore difficulty, you mainly want to stagger zombies by shooting them in the knees, because, well, they stagger slightly more often by shooting them in the knees, and there's a chance their legs might fall off. But you can't do it on that guy because he has the fucking body armor on, which makes it super frustrating to deal with. Alright, so now we have the shotgun that we discussed earlier. This is where the run can either go very wrong or very well, because this next section over in the uh, East Area 02 that you can see over there is kind of difficult. There's a whole bunch of things happening over there. There's a whole bunch of liquors. There's the, um, the lashers, which are sort of zombies that have been turned into plants. So yeah. Time to clench for the next, like... 10 minutes. <laughs> what kind of body armor? The good kind. The stuff that you buy for like 650 and for another 350 you get head armor as well. Uh, I'm gonna get this weed. This is my safety weed. He's one of the plant zombies. We're gonna run past him. Uh, I believe this is the code. Alright, good. And then another one, which is... 
Fuck. Uh... Oh, whew. Actually, fuck, brain. I actually fucking remembered them. <laughs> when I did my uh, practice run yesterday, I had no clue what they were. This oh my god. Oh. <laughs> yeah, four digit codes. Really hard to remember. It's not even numbers, they're based on fucking shapes. But you're on a numpad, can't you? I mean. Yeah, but I don't have the brain to like think of each individual <laughs> figure as a number. You think I'm smart enough for that? I mean, I'm still casualing this puzzle. I don't know how this works. This, this is one that's gonna hurt your head, viewers. Um, Especially everybody that has played this game or runs this game. Yes, yes. Good. Wait. No. <laughs> go back. Oh, no. No, go back. That one. Yes. Okay. Got there. Highly optimized. <laughs> I am. I have the master brain. Ask me what my IQ is. It's at least 400. Right, but that wasn't even the hard part of the section. The hard part of the section is the part coming up down here, because this is where you need to deal with a whole bunch of liquors that are down here. There's a hallway where there's going to be two liquors and a whole bunch of zombies. Hopefully this goes well. Also, because I had to ditch the extra shotgun bullets from earlier, I'm kind of low on ammo. Which is <coughs> not exactly optimal. I'm going to kill these zombies because they're going to get up when I get back here later. So just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm just going to deal with them now. Because I'm going to be running down this hallway, running from the liquor that's going to spawn now. And it's just already annoying enough to deal with the liquors, so throwing some zombies on top of that? Ugh. Not fun. Alright, here we're going to get a radio. And I still don't understand how the mechanics of this radio works, so... Wait, my inventory's full! No! Uh... Uh... <laughs> shitty knife, go away. Yeah, you have four knives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should be good. You, you wouldn't have that, yeah. Did I get it? I, okay, I do. Yeah, those frequency puzzles there are also very interesting. Yes. Yeah. No. It's like where you need to match the radio waves with what it says on the screen. Yeah, but it's like, you don't have values, it's just... No, no don't take the weed! Throw the flashbang! Not time to smoke now! Go! Alright, go to Murph. Oh, it was there. Use it. Good. Do not kill me. Alright. Like I said, that's the most scary corridor in the game. And we're not even done, we have to go back to that corridor again. Oh. Alright, so we got the herbicide. This is what we're going to be killing all, uh, all the household plants with. Because back in the room that we originally went through, where we did the uh, little puzzle with all the tubes and the liquid, we need to go back there, dispense the herbicide, and then kill all the plants in there. Alright, don't kill me. He's gonna jump at me here? Alright. Clench. Alright, I think we're good. 
This room is usually pretty safe. <laughs> like, famous last words? Yep. Alright, put the herbicide in here, then we kill all the plants in this big room in here. And then... See, all the plants are dead, but for some reason, even though they're dead, they're gonna respawn here in a second, which is kind of weird. Because the moment that we pick up this next item that we need to continue, Mr. X is gonna spawn again. And also a bunch of plant boys are just gonna spawn in. So here's Mr. X. There he is. Say goodbye. Alright, let's see where this plant boy spawns. Okay, this is scary. This is scary. Ooh, okay. Okay, those guys can also be super scary because they spawn in slightly different locations as well. So, sometimes they're going to spawn in the back corner. Sometimes they'll spawn right in front of you in the path that you're taking. So it can be slightly risky if you just want to go for it and run past them. But if they grab you, you're just fucked. You're just you're dead. Well, you're not dead, but you might lose a knife, which you really need at this point. Because again, knives do big boy damage if you have very high FPS. I killed the weed plants. Yeah, sorry, dude. I'm actually the FBI cracking down on the weed problem in Raccoon City. This is the new canon lore. Yeah, I was wondering why you got so sidetracked. Like, Leon just ends up, oh, I'm in this facility here, killing plants. Yeah. I mean, Leon just really hates weed. Fucking crackheads. Alright, in this next room, in this room, there's gonna be a boss fight. It's not going to start yet, but when we come back from the other direction, after we get an item in this next room, um, the boss is going to spawn in, and this is also a point where we're going to clench a little bit. I'm going to waste like five seconds here and go get some extra shotgun bullets because we had to dump the ones that we found earlier to make space in our inventory. So we're going to take this big amount of gunpowder, add this to make some more shotgun shells, and then... Uh, we equip one of the good knives, and then we, we clench. Time for me to practice my godly seize go aim. Hmm. Alright, so, here's the boss. Shoot him in the knee. Shoot him in the shoulder. And then, show me your back. Yes! Woo! Eat my 150 FPS, loser! <laughs> yeah, going on town. Two towns, one town, one. But kill him. Alright, and but now yeah, this, this, this is where we chuck all our nades at him. Yeah, at this point you don't care about breaking knives. Yeah, yeah. You wanna keep knives are a little fun. bit on them. Alright, die! Loser, you should have. You should be dead. He's not dead! Alright, I don't want to waste my shotgun shells. Show me your tummy. Tummy pics, please. Oh my god. Those are some utility items at the corner of the room. But if things go really wrong, you can always Oof. pick up more stuff. Now we're good. We Gucci. Actually, I'm going to pick up the... Eh, nah. Eh, nah, eh, nah. Oh, dude, I golded that. Hell yeah. I, I saved three minutes on that. <laughs> dude, how bad are my splits? <laughs> I actually lost three minutes on that. Or saved three minutes compared to my PB. <sighs> to be fair, I think that's when, it, when you crash in your PB. Yeah, no, I crash once and then I also fail that fight twice. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> so, very optimized run, yes. Very fast.
All right, so this is the end of the game. You can sort of see the uh, the timer at this top. We need to get out before the whole facility self-destructs, but it's going to take around three or four minutes from here on out, depending on uh, how well I do this. But we still have the last boss fight coming up, which is arguably the most clench moment, because the last boss is based around two factors, damage and time. When the start or the fight starts, you need to do a certain amount of damage to him, and then after you've dealt that damage to him, you then need to survive for around a minute and a half to two minutes. And that's the time where you really just need to like just focus up and just not get yourself killed, because that is just the only thing that can lose you the run at that point. So I'm getting that extra health item just in case. I don't think I need this knife, but I might as well. In this next corridor, there's going to be a whole bunch of uh, lashers. I'm not sure if I can get around one of them without using a knife. I don't think I can, so I'm going to be using the yeah the shittiest knife that I have to stab him. Not this guy, but the guy standing up over there. He grabs me, we knife him. And there should be one of his friends over here as well. Maybe we can dodge this guy if we're lucky? We can. Nice. Good. Grab some more weed, just to be on the safe side. Is he gonna get S rank? Yes. This... Unless I somehow lose an hour here, <laughs> in the next... <laughs> to the last boss fight, we should S rank this. Alright, here's Mr. X. Hello, sir. Goodbye. You run faster with a knife. Everybody knows you run faster with a knife. You just get all CSGO memes. Combine with that. Well, I guess that's a technically a kind of strike source meme, but whatever. We'll do it anyways. Or well, pretty much any kind of thing. Nah, this is... Pretty sure this is kind of strike. Alright, this is Mr. X in his final form, and we're gonna knife him to death. And pray he doesn't kill us. Ooh. He looks much more dangerous without his head on. Yeah, I mean, he looks super cute with his hat. Oh, but yeah, I think we're at the point. Yep. We've done enough damage to him at this point. I'm just shooting him to maybe stagger him every once in a while. So now we just pretty much need to survive for like a minute and a half. Oof. I swear I know how to aim. Also, the reason why we really want some shotgun shells is he's gonna do a move at some point. Yeah, here it comes. This is where he does a charge attack. And if this charge attack hits us, he will one-shot us, regardless of how much health we have. If we are at full HP and even playing on assisted difficulty, that attack will one-shot you. So you need a shotgun shell to stop it. Alright, nice. Oh, don't die, don't die. Alright, we did it. Alright, time's coming up here in a second. We have our fancy rocket launcher. We're gonna kill these last zombies, and then the moment I get onto this train is when time is called. Oh man. And here we go. And time. Whew. GG. You're under this. That was underestimate. Yo, you owe me another burger. Save yourself a couple, um, a minute. <laughs> well done, mate. I should pee me! <laughs> I oh, peed me! Pee me? <laughs> I did pee me! <laughs> oh my god. Maniacal <laughs> laughter. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh. Oh. <laughs> one minute, or sorry, one hour, six minutes, 53 seconds. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, man. So, yeah. That was a Resident Evil 2 remake. Like, let's see uh, if I can get the, uh, the final score up on screen here. It should say here towards the end. After the credits. Yeah, somebody wanted to know if you're going to get an S rank. Yeah. Ooh, S plus. S plus rank. Hey. There we go. So uh, feel free to use this as a tutorial if you too want an S rank on standard difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> Although, as far as I remember, standard difficulty only gives you an SMG with unlimited ammo. Um, which is, well, that's still good, but the rocket launcher is still the go-to New Game Plus weapon. But yeah, that was uh, Resident Evil 2. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you want to see another run with me, I'm actually going to be doing one a little bit later today. I'm going to be doing a co-op run of Divinity Original Sin 2, along with Mr. Walrus 3451. And uh, yeah, it's a fun run, so... Definitely